Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha Kid Geek XX Chic back with another reaction to Titans. We are now on episode five already. It's kind of hard to believe we're in five episodes in. It feels like the show just came back, but I'm actually okay with that. Uh, I think if we have the same amount of, sorry, something in my eye. Um, I think if we have the same amount of episodes as we did last season, then it'll be tying up right as a lot of the other shows I watched start ramping up. So that may not be a bad thing because The Flash is coming back next week already, as is The Walking Dead. So uh, things are about to get crazy again, but it's good. You know, it's I, I like my shows. It's going to be interesting to have them all back. But anyways, back to this show. This episode is called Deathstroke. So if we are going in the same vein as we have with all of the other named episodes, we're potentially going to learn the story of Deathstroke in this episode. Last episode, we learned about Aqualad and the effect that he had on Team Titan, Titans, pardon me. But we also got a little bit of insight into Deathstroke as far as how he got incorporated with the whole Titan storyline. So as I actually said in the review for the last video, I do did hope that they would go a little bit into Deathstroke and his story and understanding more about him. I'm also very excited about this episode because Corey's back. Missed her in the last few episodes. It's been like two episodes without her, which is a little sad. So anyway, I'm going to be happy because this will be the first episode that they'll be all back together since episode one at this point, I think. So without further ado, let's get into this episode and we will chat about it afterwards. All right, let's go. Wake up, Jason, you dumbass. Lame. You are so lame. Oh, Dr. Light. I said shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dr. Light, you deserve that shit. You let him bait you. Wait, is this real though? The show loves to mess with us with dream series. And there's Deathstroke. Leaving so soon. Yes. No offense, but I don't find being hung by my arms a fun time, so I'm out. Gar, maybe you should get wake her up first. Definitely wake her up first. Don't touch it, Gar. Garfield, you've done enough stupid things today. God, you're dumb. What? What happened to Jason? Nothing. Why are you here? We, We're not making out. Doctor left. Why did you out there in the first place? Thank you. On your own. With mm. weapons, no backup. Sorry. That's right. I just need details. Yes. Specifics. <laughs> just write down everything. You want Dick's like, I don't want to have to go too old school on your ass right now. Just write things down and get out my face. Has been complaining about being left out with. Oh, don't blame yourself. Shitstar did this on his own. There Thank you. First sensible thing Hank said. I got dragged out of bed to trudge through sewer water because dipshit decided to go off half cocked. At least Jason found Dr. White. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Hank is having like a, a black parent right now, just cussing the entire time. He's like, if I find Jason, I'm gonna ask if he's all right and then I'm gonna beat the hell out of his ass. This is all because of you and your big dumb fucking idea to start up the Titans again. I'm out. Yep, me too. Exactly. We're like, we really can't, there's not enough radius in these tunnels for your dick swinging, so. Why are you sitting there like a damn statue? Because he's like, I'm a professional. And now you just let our best chance of killing these masks slip through our fingers. And for what? That's for a reason you may not be capable of understanding. Thank you, dummy. Yeah, he called you dumb. You found out. I'm beginning to wonder just how different you are. From Can you please it's shut him up? Costume, swinging your sword around, nothing gets done. Wow. Keep if it up. You're looking for a result. I'm happy to provide you with one. Exactly. He's like, try me. See if you can charge up your little light bulb, your little flash before I cut your head off. Not even fucking up, Spigo. Hit him again. Hit him again. Oh, that's gonna hurt, isn't it? I mean, you could have avoided this, Jason, so. If you don't listen, you gotta feel. I'm so mad because I want things my way. I'm a PhD, but I'm a dummy. White rage is something I'll just never fully comprehend. Sorry. That second 
shoulder bump did it, man. How's this coffee not ready yet? Sorry, Robin 2.0 is missing or whatever, but he did this to himself. Thank you. So don't project your guilt on me, Tiger Boy. Hmm. That's facts on facts. I mean, I kind of like Rose. I can't help it. What? Okay, that's a lot of cereal, girl. Must be nice to be able to eat all the carbs you want. If you could have come to me, I could have helped if you didn't keep yeah. a secret. Or I could have stopped you. you. You can't even control yourself. Excuse me? Yeah, I saw you yesterday in the train. You couldn't bring it back in. Not to mention your creepy black cloud of razor blades that nearly took my... Okay, Gar, you need to roll this all the way back. My powers are fine. If I'd been there, I could turn the guy into a glowing puddle. What did you do, Gar? Did you growl at him? Was he real scared? Ooh! If you and Jason had been so stupid and thought it through, none of this would have happened. Who are you? Security alert. Main entrance. The tea is scolding. Thank God Mama's here. You want him back? Hand over Rose. Seems like a fair trade. Jason got a satellite searching for Jason's tracker. So, what else is up? Yeah. Let them deal with that nonsense. What you do with you? When my father ripped out my heart, I changed. That would change a person. Normally, this works, but not for me. Why? I don't know. T. My powers just wouldn't stay caged. Because you were queen. I just decide to be good. It's a little yeah. more complicated at times, but yes. The amount of sense Corey's made in the last minute and a half that hasn't happened since the beginning of this season. Corey's here! Good news! Corey? Yeah, I'm here. What happened to Jason? <laughs> well, you knew they were gonna tell. Jason is hurt, alone. Scared. Can I? We all know what that feels like. Oh, this is what this is about. I'm like, you don't even like Jason. You good with this, Grayson? Ooh, she called you by your last name. Have you lost your mind? You're all turning into monsters instead of trying to figure out how to fight one. Thank God for Corey. Isn't that true? I knew she was gone. Rose. 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 Honey. Rose. Come in. Look, we can talk and like have cookies and milk or something. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Shut up, jerk. I literally just heard you. Hey. He's just putting her to sleep. Her go. It's nap time. Yeah, you really shouldn't piss her off. Okay, we can stop now. That was a crack. That was definitely a crack. I like the way it's getting all wingies. But I think you might have paralyzed Rose. Oh my god! Is that just her boot? Rachel, don't! What the f What did you do? What are we supposed to do now? Give her back to her dad? Too soon? Oh yeah, I forgot she's got experiments. Okay, that shit's messed up. Nope, mm -mm. get the devil out your house. Even Rachel's not that creepy. Which problem do you want to fix first? <laughs> Come on, Papa Bear. Mama Bear's here. You got a tag team now. Dick Grayson. He gives costumes to foolish kids, making them believe that they're heroes. Mm, talk about Jericho now. For death leads to purification. Then why don't you kill yourself then? I hate when people say that. You want to tell me why this Deathstroke guy is getting under everyone's skin? Yeah, she's like, I'm new here. Hi. And this is the last episode. Royal Protection Services. Hey! Your Highness. Royal as you could like. start calling me queen now. So you haven't decided for sure yet? Because I'd really like it if you'd stay with the team. Yeah. You could use your help. I can't handle these kids by myself. Anyway, so I just need your help. Think about it. Just Titans? By the way, I like your new hair. <laughs> Just kidding, you can keep coming. Dick, come in. Anybody got eyes on Dick? Oh, Dick. Dick, move. Going after Deathstroke myself. Dick. 
other plans. You didn't have to destroy it. Turning it off would have been sufficient. You know, these rich kids, no respect. Corey, come get you, man. You're a con man. Praying on those weak enough to follow you. And you're a murderer. Potato, potato. Oh, say goodbye to your friend. That's right. Corey, come get your man. Do you really think you're going to compliment my hair instead of saying goodbye to Grayson? Exactly. <laughs> She's like, I know my man. Not today. Roast, bitch. That's right, Corey. Mess him up. Howie, not the face. Yes. Shoes, boss. You got the wrong bitch today, Deathstroke. When you don't learn the guns don't work, you idiot. Yes. I have two old man knees, bitch. Oh, okay. Well, that's the game. It's not happening today. No, royalty's not going out like this, sir. Not today. That's right. He's like, that's my woman. Don't you? Oh! You don't want to know what I did to Batman when he imaginarily killed her. Uh-uh. That's my little jerk face. Corey, get over here. Corey, we need your super strength. All right, I'm gonna lose Jason Todd. I feel like we're not, though. The others heard the helicopter. Corey, you can fly. Where's Deathstroke? Why are you not beating the crap out of him right now? Really? I'm mad. All right, guys, that was the fifth episode called Deathstroke, and that was good. I think this is probably my favorite episode of the season so far. The pacing was good. The conversations were good. The action was good. This was a good one. Okay, let's just talk about Dr. Light for two seconds because that was hilarious. <laughs> there are a few things about Dr. Light that never quite added up for me since this show started. And the main thing was, okay, fine. Like, remember when he first showed up on the scene, I asked you guys about, like, who is this Dr. Light? Why is he named Dr. Light? And you guys told me about, like, his comic book version of himself and in this one. And it's almost like they kind of try to mesh the two together because I thought, okay, is he just calling himself Dr. Light because he does stuff with light or because he actually is a doctor? So apparently he's supposed to be smart. In this version, we heard them say twice that he's got like a PhD in some kind of science, but he was an idiot. Like, let's be real. He was so stupid. He acted like a frat boy with powers the whole time, which is why I couldn't really take him seriously as a villain. And I don't know if they were just trying to hype up the fact that he was probably a science geek his whole life and got bullied because of it. And this was his way of getting back at all the bullies or if they just, I don't even know. Like it just never made sense to me that somebody who's supposed to be smart enough to understand like quantum physics and all the things you'd need to to understand manipulating light and all that kind of stuff would be the kind of guy that could be baited by a 16 year old. Do <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it just didn't really add up to me. So I, I was really wondering if they were gonna keep him around the whole season. I, I would have been fine with it, especially if it was like an idea of like Deathstroke being the brains and Light being the distraction. But I'm not sad he's gone. I'm not gonna lie, guys. Like the helmet was so annoying. I couldn't take it. You saw me. Like every, every episode I was like, I can't take you seriously with that helmet on. Beyond that, like his character just had no like, they didn't even try to grow him or give us any depth or insight into him outside of the fact that he could be easily baited by Jason. So, I mean, he deserved all the ass weapons he got. And the way he just kept pushing Deathstroke, I was like, he clearly doesn't understand that this man's an assassin. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think I said in the video, like, do you really think you're gonna be able to charge up your little Superman, like, light pew pew before he would slice your head off or shoot you in the face? Yeah, he wasn't the brightest, uh, he wasn't, but even though his name was Dr. Light, he wasn't so bright. He was actually kind of dull. I love that there was no like big massive battle or anything crazy. The Deathstroke was like, so I'm an assassin, pew, done. Done with you, you, you hit me not once, but twice. Twice you hit the same shoulder. And I knew it the first time he did it, I was like, ooh, Deathstroke was like, touch me again, touch me again and see what happens. And there you go, now we know. Dr. Light, I guess his purpose was served. But anyway, that's that so ends the arc of Dr. Light. As I said, not really gonna miss him. I don't feel like he would have had a lot of room this season anyways. Deathstroke, I think, is supposed to be our main issue and potentially 
some more Tamaranians. I think they hinted towards that with the whole episode uh, with Corey talking about, you know, where she's supposed to be, but we'll talk about that uh, when it comes up later on, which I hope it comes up later on, which rolls right into Corey, actually. I'm so glad my girl is back. It's so nice to see the team, the family back together again. Rachel needs her so, so much. And I really enjoy the scenes between Anna Diop and, um, oh gosh, what's her name? I can't think of her real name right now, but the girl who plays um, Rachel, they have a really good chemistry on screen and it's, they, they're, you know, they really bounce off each other well. And I love that Rachel has this person that she can be completely honest with and feel like she's not being judged with. So she can really just talk about all of her fears and her darkest emotions and things like that because Corey can relate, right? Corey's the only other person in that group, maybe short of Dick, because Dick's killed, but not that much. Comparatively, like both Rachel and, you know, and, and uh, uh, Corey kind of have a bit of a body count. You know, they both have done some pretty devastating things uh, <laughs> with their powers. So I think that she feels like they've got that common ground that she can't really share with Gar. I mean, Gar has killed someone as well, but we see that that racks Gar with guilt. So not to mention the fact that Gar is also holding a little bit of judgment that we're going to talk about in a minute. But anyway, it was really just good to see them have that conversation and Rachel be able to basically let a go of a breath she's been holding, it feels like, uh, for the past few months with these changes to her powers and dealing with everything that's happened post Trigon. It is very interesting though that she does not at all link this new behavior in her powers to Trigon at all, but again, she doesn't know anything about them. She still is very ignorant as to what he is and what the whole deal with her powers is. And so I do hope that we start to explore a more of that as the season goes on. I don't want it to be the focal point, however, because we got a lot of focus on Rachel in season one, but I still do think whenever you have a show that's an ensemble cast, I want to see development for everyone. I want to see everyone on their own journey. And I know there's going to be one or two characters that will probably have the primary journey, but all of them should have an arc that they're following through. Corey, her should be whether or not she's going to return to Tamaran and actually assume the throne. With Rachel, her figuring out what her powers are actually about and owning those powers, right? Because that's why I think what Corey was trying to tell her in that conversation was that these powers aren't going anywhere. Like they're a part of you, whether you like it or not. So you can't keep hiding from them. You have to figure out how to how to use them and you know be, you be the person in control of your powers instead of your powers being the one who controls you. And of course, Rachel's just hearing that right now is let him go crazy. It's like, no, I'm not saying to go ahead and murder people. I'm just saying, you know, suppression is not the answer. And I love the little story she talked about how with her in her abilities that they've been so strong since she was little, that even the suppression that they normally have in Tamara didn't work. So she's like, I had to learn how to control my powers. That was the only way. Love that conversation. Love the chemistry between the two of them. It's a great thing for Rachel as well. And I, as I said, I want that to be her journey throughout this season and potentially into next of her really understanding that these are her powers. Yes, Trigon is always going to be associated with it, but he's not the one driving or he shouldn't be the one driving the powers and, and how they're used. That's up to Rachel as soon as she kind of accepts that. And instead of associating all of it with it being bad and her being bad for having them, she's got to realize that no, no, no. Power in of itself is neither bad or good, right? Just like, you know, I mean, Corey said, you know, with a baby. So like a baby's never not born either bad or good. It's the same thing with powers. Powers are neither bad or good, but how you choose to wield them is what makes the difference, right? How you choose to use those things. So that's what Rachel has to learn. And I want to see her go through that journey in this season. Gar has got to learn to also accept the fact that he can be a warrior and someone who's strong and can protect people, but that he also can still be someone who's very caring and it doesn't turn him into the animals that, you know, he so loves to change into by doing that. But I feel like we also need to do a little bit more about Gar's story. We really still don't know a lot about him. This episode, watching him deal with his guilt over knowingly making a poor decision with supporting Jason to go off after Dr. Light is very interesting because we've seen Gar do this. Like he likes to beat himself up about poor decisions. Like we've seen that, like as far as like Rachel and how it was when he was with the Doom Patrol, but we don't get a lot, or even like last season with him when he killed that doctor who had done all that horrible torture to him. Like Gar's got a lot of anger. There's a lot of darkness and anger in Gar that he's very much trying to ignore. And just like with Rachel, he can't keep pretending that it's not there. We haven't seen enough of him to know, but I do feel like Gar is struggling with abandonment. 
We still don't know what happened to his family, why he was alone in the jungle where that doctor who gave him the serum gave it to him. Like, there's so much about Gar we still don't know, and I really need a Garfield episode. Not the backdoor episode we got last season, which was really a backdoor pilot to the Doom Patrol. We need a real Gar episode, and I really hope we get it this season. He deserves it, and we deserve it. You know, the actor deserves it, we deserve it. But anyway, I want to see Gar's journey, whatever it may be, and obviously Dick's journey of continuously figuring out who he is now that he's no longer Robin or associated with Batman. All of those things are necessary, and I want to see if the show does this well. There's no reason why they can't give us those four main storylines and still have an overarching journey that they go on as far as the Titans and reforming them as this new group. Closing off the Rachel and Corey stuff, uh, then... <laughs> Dick and Corey, and Corey and Dick. Listen, I didn't do reactions to the show last season, but when I was watching these episodes, one of the things I loved is the chemistry between Corey and Dick, aka Anna and um, Brendan. They have, or is his name Brendan? Brenton. Brenton. That's what it is. Sorry. Anyways, they have great chemistry. And whenever you put a romantic coupling together to me, it's important that it's, that it's more than they're just good looking. It, there has to be real chemistry. There has to be a believable, like, you know, kind of thing between the two of them. And I think that these two definitely have it. And I loved their relationship last season. I thought it was very believable considering the way that they threw them together. And I love, one of the things I absolutely love is the way that Dick looks at Corey. It's just so, ah, it's so cute. It's so adorable. And when he walked into Titan Tower when she was back and she was just standing there looking like the queen that she is and he just got that soft look on his face like the world's burning you know Jason's captured Deathstroke's back they're clearly gotten the drop on them everything's going wrong but then Dick sees Corey and it's practically like Corey <laughs> like he was ready to just risk it all right there and be like so guys y'all go and deal with the Jason thing I have some catching up to do with my woman <laughs> digressing dickery shipping side uh, I love their dynamic and I love that even last season Corey is the one person we've seen Dick be nakedly honest with like he doesn't hold up walls with Corey with the exception initially about why he didn't want to go back to being Robin but we saw as the season went on last season he eventually but that wall came down around Corey and maybe it's because Corey couldn't remember who she was but I think is the thing about Corey is that she very much gives off an air of acceptance of whoever she's with. She's never in judgment of anybody. She's never coming at a, a what's wrong with you people sort of thing. She's very much like, oh, that's your truth. Okay, cool. And I think that that's one of the reasons why Rachel feels so comfortable with her, why Gar feels so comfortable with her. And of course, why Dick, I have a wall the size of the Berlin Wall around me all the time, Grayson, was able to, even after just knowing her for a short time, talk to her about some of the most deep and pressing things that he's dealing with. And so I love that after, of course, you know, his dreamy like, you're back, they had their conversation and they could talk and Dick could talk about, like we saw later on, right before he went for the mission, he told her all about what happened to Titan Tower. He couldn't even do that with Rachel, who he's, oh, the other person he's probably closest to there. He couldn't do that with her, but with, with Corey, he could just open, it, it was just so natural for him to just tell her the whole story because he knew she wasn't going to come at him with any kind of judgment or finger pointing or anything like that. She just kind of, she just heard it and she was like, okay, so what are we going to do? What's the plan? Like, ah, oh, there's such a good coupling. Sorry. There's a really loud sound that went off there, but yeah, they're just such a good pairing. I love them. Not even not just romantically, but even it's just a team of the mom and dad of Titans, like of the teens. They're just so well put together as far as being able to bounce off each other, as far as that trust they have within one another, and the fact that they always have each other's back, and oh my god, I'm so happy it was Corey that saved him, I knew it would be. I said it in the video, I was like, Corey, come get you, man, I knew it, I'm like, she's, but I mean, okay, I mean, I, I squealed a little bit in the video, but when he was all like, I like your new hair, I was like, it's not like Dick to throw compliments out, first of all, so I think that's why she knew, but he's not the kind, I mean, the way he looks at her is clearly a compliment, you know, constantly, but I'm glad that you picked up on, okay, you know, I mean, I knew you wanted to flirt with me anyway, but the fact that she used that as a signal to be like, no, you're about to do something stupid if you're getting sappy on me like this, and so she was the one to figure it out, found him, and ended up saving his behind, that's, that's hot. 
Couples who look out for each other. It's just like in the in uh, in Ju Young Justice, you know, when they be looking out, like that's what happens. Corey be looking out for her man, okay? She ain't about to let her man get snatched by no freak in a mask. Not today, sir. But it was super cool. We actually got to see some new things as far as Corey's abilities. I don't think we've ever seen her stop bullets with her fire before. And it wasn't even with fire, actually. She just put up like a force field and she blocked the bullets. So that's awesome. We didn't see that at all last season. Really, all we saw with her abilities was the fire. So, and also her speed healing. So it was great to see that she's also bulletproof. So yeah, that's basically uh, all the stuff with Corey. I feel like she's probably going to give him a firm telling off next episode about going off on his own, but I think she understands it. Like, I think that's the one reason why she, out of all the group, right, you think about it, all the rest of the Titans have known Dick for years. Donna since they were children, and none of them figured out other than Corey, who's been with him, what, a few months? Knew enough to know that he was going off on his own. Like, that's just, eh, if that isn't couple goals. But also I think, you know, again, shipping aside, she think, her and Dick think alike. They're both leaders, they're both warriors. And so she kind of knew that, yeah, this is the kind of thing that Dick would do. He'd go off and try to fall on his sword for the sake of his friends. So let me go off and stop him from doing something stupid. And I do hope that Jason has learned something from all of this. I hope he feels a little bit more secure in his relationships with the Titans knowing that they risked his, their lives to come get him, even though he went off on his own and he absolutely asked for everything that happened to him. Listen, I know that Hank was, we found out later on, dealing with his own issues, but everything he said was truth before that. He was grumbling the way black people always do when we have to do something we know should be like, this boy did this to himself. We up in this disgusting sewer water in the middle of the night, hungry and cold and tired and out here chasing this boy that could have been in his bed. Um, I hope Jason, I know that a lot of his actions annoying as they are, are prompted by the fact that he clearly does not feel, he doesn't feel secure. I think he started to feel some level of security with Batman, but then being kind of dumped on, on Dick, he kind of probably felt once again, like he wasn't needed or desired. And so he went out and did stupid things to get attention. And hopefully now that he sees that Dick does care and the rest of the Titans do care about him, he'll reel back some of that chaos. I have no guarantees though, because he is a bit of a dickhead. Outside of that, I guess the only other things that were kind of interesting were, of course, seeing that potentially my theories from last episode were true, that Dick somehow got Jericho killed or is very directly related to how Jericho died. And from the sounds of things, Deathstroke blames Dick for it. The fact that he was willing to kill Jason, who is literally an innocent party in all of this, is a pretty strong indicator that he feels that Dick is responsible for the death of Jericho. So whether or not Rose is actually in or out of this, I'm not sure. She, we also found out that she's got crazy regenerative, regenerative capabilities. So that makes me think that with her eyes, she must have cut it out because if she can literally un, her, her back was broken, her legs were broken, her hands were broken. Like a bunch of things were broken. She healed all of that instantaneously, but her eye is still missing. The fight between Gar and Rachel, that was very interesting because they both came at each other with some pretty wicked tea in that fight. And I know a lot of it came from Gar being frustrated and feeling guilty about his part in Jason's disappearance, but a lot of things were clearly bottled up from a lot earlier. You know, the fact that he said he doesn't really trust Rachel's powers right now, the fact that he tried to touch whatever that black cloud was. I don't know what one would think that that was a good idea. I don't know what went through his mind in that moment. But anyway, he's clearly afraid of Rachel right now. There is some fear going on there, some distrust. And maybe that's because Rachel is not opening up to him the way she opened up to Corey about it. But yeah, there's a little bit of, there's some tension going on at Titan Tower beyond what we saw with just Jason. And I feel like they're gonna need to have a come to Jesus because we saw in reverse, Rachel said the same thing to Gar. Like, you're not trusting me. You should have come to me. Like, we're part of the, the team gang in here and you didn't come to bring me along on the mission. Why didn't you? So there's some issues all along. Like, I love that they're showing that right now the team is still kind of broken. And I think part of it was the fact that Corey wasn't there, but also just the fact that Dick needs to be more open and more forthcoming with these kids because kids reflect what they're around, right? Like how we learn and grow and become as people is a reflection of what we're surrounded by. And at the moment, Dick, by not telling them the truth about what happened to the Titans the first time, not talking about how he feels or what he's thinking, he's teaching them to keep secrets. And so that's not gonna work if they're gonna be a co cohesive team that's gonna be going up against literal life or death battles going forward. So 
hopefully this season they're going to figure out that they need to work out all these trust issues that they have within each other. And while that doesn't mean they have to tell each other every single thing, there's some pretty important stuff that they're going to have to start being more honest with each other about. So hopefully that will happen and we'll see them kind of grow and tighten and tighten, not tighten, but tighten. <laughs> <laughs> ah, English. Their bond is a group and, and be able to be like the best version of this superhero team going forward. What did you guys think of this episode? How are you feeling about this whole Deathstroke out for revenge for Jericho storyline? Do you think that's the only thing reason that he's going after the Titans? Please leave your comments below. I love all the information you guys have been giving me. I love it so much. Thank you. Keep it coming. And if you like this video, please click like. And if you see more from this geeky face, please click subscribe. Until next time, see ya.